the best reason to move is because you can. This is Ido Portal. By watching him, you might think that he's a gymnast or even a fighter or sometimes even a lizard. He is all of these things and none of them at the same time. In this video, we're gonna see what makes Ido Portal one of the most disruptive forces in fitness industry, his philosophy and how can we apply his teachings to live a longer and more active life. Welcome to Road Delta and today we're gonna look at the lessons behind Ido Portal. If we look around the fitness industry and to what people are practicing, we can easily group them into sports or practices. He practices Muay Thai, she practices CrossFit, they are gymnasts. But when we try to apply the same logic to Ido, we may find ourselves a little bit confused. In part is because we are used to labeling everything, but it's also because Ido's approach to movement is so different. He himself acknowledges this. You know, from the outside, it's very hard to understand what we're doing. So for us to better understand his view, I think it helps if we look at Ido's path until this point. Ido started his physical journey in traditional martial arts, eventually ending up practicing capoeira during 15 years. And capoeira is a very odd martial art on itself, which I believe it gave Ido the necessary foundations for his way of looking at movement. More than a martial art, capoeira is a social interaction, a dance between two capoeiristas which can take a friendly or aggressive tone. Combined with live music, capoeira is more than anything an expression of the freedom of movement. This freedom, I think, allowed Ido to explore different practices like rock climbing or improvisation and he realized that movement is the ultimate practice. He stopped identifying as a practitioner of a certain way of moving and embraced the ultimate dogma. He's a practitioner of movement. I feel that from all Ido's lessons, this one is perhaps the most powerful. We often fall into the trap of identifying with the social narrative and all its labels, but we forget to wonder what really drives us. We create these boxes so that we can play in them, but now we are trapped in them. This applies to physical practices, but also in our social interactions and even within ourselves. We must be able to abstract ourselves from all these labels and words and really experience things and really find why we are doing what we are doing. And that's the first requirement to start to understand Ido Portal's work. Now, I know that until now it may sound a little bit too esoteric, but trust me, everything is practical. He is not only preaching, he's doing it. If you go on his YouTube channel, there's hundreds of videos of him and his students performing all these different movements. Because of his dogma, he is a generalist, a jack of all trades, master of none, which I feel it makes perfect sense if we are talking about exercise and longevity. In society, we tend to admire the greatest specialists who dedicate insane amounts of time and effort to perfect a practice. But sometimes it's not sustainable. After a long period of time, the body just starts to suffer from making the same movements and suffering the same stress over and over again. And that's actually a reality for me. I played basketball for almost 10 years and I can definitely see how it affected my body in a good way, but also in a bad way. And that's why it's so important to introduce variety in our physical practices. Hido has an interesting approach to this. Instead of focusing solely on mastering a certain practice, that we should divide our practices into three different zones. Zone one is when you're introduced to a new concept and you can't do it yet. You, you can't fulfill the physical task. Zone two is when you already made it, but it's not smooth, it's not perfected. Zone three is when it's perfected. He goes to say that it's important to play in the three zones, but there's one that offers the most benefits, and that's zone one, where we are learning new movements. And these benefits go beyond physical improvements into the realm of brain development. A study from the University of Oxford measured how white matter changed while someone was learning a new motor skill like juggling. After six weeks of learning, they found that white matter increased almost 6%. But what's more interesting is that this increase is not strongly correlated with performance, so how well they could juggle, but more correlated with the amount of time they spent training. And that's why learning new movements is so beneficial for our brains and for our bodies. 
but it's quite easy to get comfortable and remain in zone 3 where we have everything figured out and we can show off our skills but we should never stop learning new movements. With this way of thinking coupled with Ido's movement philosophy, I think we can fundamentally change why and how we move. Let's take it back to basketball. Let's agree that a basketball player needs a combination of skills like strength, speed, agility, technique and endurance. If you identify with the basketballer narrative, you will only build up these skills by the practice of basketball. After all, you want to be a better basketball player. But if you step back and only look at movements, suddenly all these new possibilities are available. To improve in agility, you might now look at parkour and see an opportunity to learn from them that can improve your practice. And Ido did exactly this to train Conor McGregor, a MMA fighter. He made him dance, lizard crawl, balance in poles, all of these movements that you wouldn't associate with a fighter. And I don't know if it was because of Ido, but he eventually won the fight right after this training. So it's possible to learn from different practices and bring it back to your own. But if you don't have a particular passion for a sport, I argue that it gets even more interesting. Now instead of basketball, you practice movement and with it comes all this freedom to play. Suddenly you are free to emerge yourself in all types of movements and still grow in skill. Ido tries to grow in all these different vectors at the same time, guaranteeing that he stays in all three zones without suffering the consequences of specializing in a particular practice. I personally think that these are the core aspects of Ido Portal's message, but to be honest, this is still just a snippet of what he has to offer. I had to research quite a lot to make this video and I still feel like I just begun. It's like he unlocked a world of learning opportunities by bringing it down to the basics. There is no fancy gear and complicated machines, only a body and some Olympic rings. No reverse engineered aesthetics, only the consequence of movement. And just by thinking about movement in this different way, it's already affecting my workouts. I'm moving more and more away from isolated movements and focusing more on skills like handstands or working on my L-sit. And these are the lessons behind Ido Portal. But Everything comes down to action. So now the question is, what are you going to do? Thank you for watching this video. I've been trying to get this format going for quite a long time and I decided to start with Ido because he's a very interesting guy as you saw. So let me know in the comments if you have someone else that you would like me to do a lessons behind, like someone that you are passionate about or someone that has a very interesting message and yeah. Like the video if you like it, subscribe for more videos like this and I see you on the next video.